All right, guys, here's the next stage of assembly. This is the um, command center assembly. Uh, this is one honking super piece of resin. Uh, I bet this thing is five, 10 pounds by itself. It's a, uh, it weighs a lot. Um, that's how big it is on the thickness in the back. Um, you can see I've done some sanding on this. Um, this is pretty cool. Where this comes into being is that the nose piece and this fit together just like this. And then um, that's what it'll look like. And that's where your two pilots sit. And then these where your little co-pilots sit in the back. Uh, the co-pilots are made up of um, these little spindly dudes. Let's see, am I gotta focus? Focus, focus. Um, that's what the little pilots look like, they're little thing guys. So a lot of this stuff probably gonna need to be painted um before I finish. Um before you finish assembly. So you know you've got a lot of these gates to cut off. You're probably gonna have to do some sanding. Um it looks like there's these little things right here, and these slide right into it like that. So uh, we're going to look at that a little bit closer in a moment. So if you're building one, don't cut these bottom pieces off because you need them. What's funny is right here, uh, when they put the mold in, one of the G-Dub staff put their fingerprint right in here. And I could probably take this to work and get enough ridge detail to make an identification off of somebody. <laughs> uh, that's pretty funny. So whoever you are, G-Dub, we know who you are. If you screwed up my mold, I'm going to find you. I have a very special set of skills. Oops. And, uh, see, I didn't even drop that on the floor. So I'm like a ninja. Um, anyway, that's what we got to do now. We got to clean these up, cut them off the gates, and, um, you know, get ready for um, some more sanding and fitting. Uh, all this stuff, these little pieces here still have to be washed um, and cleaned up, and that's okay. Because we're going to assemble them into their parts, and then we're going to wash them. Um, just to save us a little, uh, a little downtime. Always use your snips when you're um, cutting off this stuff. Don't try and break it off, uh, or you could damage the resin. Uh, and the reason for that is that um, you want a clean break that you can uh, sand. Sometimes it's better to cut just above and then um, thin it down as you go. And then we can now sand that off to a little bit of round instead of having an old dude with a little uh, pin on his head. I'm throwing all these sprue gates down into a box that I intend to use for um, terrain. So we're going to use them and make terrain out of them. But uh, it looks like we're missing an arm. So we'll have to go back and look through the bag. I dumped the bag on the air hockey table to see how it works. But in essence, we're going to have chair, chair, chair. And this, the instructions advise, you may have to go ahead and um, paint all this before you install these guys. Now, you know, if this were just a uh, Tau fighter or something, I might put all these guys in here without worrying about painting it. Um, but since it's my expensive ass Manta, um, I'm actually going to spend a little time. I'll paint these consoles up and throw some uh, detail to them so that they look a little better. So uh, let's roll on with the assembly and uh, clean up. As you can see, where I do some cleanup here, we got to get our X Acto knife, cut this out, sand it down. Um, we got to fix these little corners and sand them flush uh, so that it'll fit. We already got a lot of dust on this. And, you know, when you're working on this Forge World stuff, make sure you got a good, well ventilated area because you're going to get this dust everywhere. See? Um, so far, this is how much I've recovered uh, from sanding on this kit. So, all right, guys, here we go. Here is the stuff that I found that takes off the mold release pretty good. And um, it is uh, Dawn Ultra uh, times two concentrated. And so um, I found that it works really well in taking off uh, mold release. And I'm gonna show you how um, in just a second. 
Um, right here, we've got uh, these two parts. Now this part right here was soaked in um, uh, purple power, and you can see that this is just resin. It's a flat, uh, no shininess to it whatsoever, but there's a lot of dust on there, so we're gonna wash that to get all that dust off. Um, this, however, you can see, this was also soaked in simple green or uh, purple power, but you can see the shininess on there. And what that is is mold release. And they put that on there so that these parts don't stick to um, the mold. So I've been having the worst time trying to find uh, something that will take it off um, without hurting the resin. Now this is a brand new sponge. I haven't used it for food or anything crazy like that. And I'll never use it for anything but um, washing models. Uh, and that way, you know, I don't get broccoli on my models or anything crazy like that. But what I'm going to do is um, sit here and soap this puppy up and uh, just give it a good um, scrubbing. You know, uh, after a few minutes, the uh, mold release will start coming off and uh, the sponge helps take it off with a little abrasive pad on it. Plus, it cleans off all that resin dust and cleans out the nooks and crannies where I've been sanding and will reveal any imperfections. Let's see how that looks now. Oh, need a little bit of hot water. It works better too, I found, with warm water. The problem that we have with the uh, purple power is you couldn't get a big enough container to hold these parts, man. These parts are ginormous. Now we gotta get down in, uh, in the nooks and crannies here, so we pull out our old toothbrush. Again, this isn't a toothbrush that I use on anything but models. So don't think I'm brushing my teeth with Simple Green or Purple Power or, or Dawn. But we'll get in here and get all the nooks and crannies. You might have to repeat this a couple times. Um, I can feel the area where there's no mold release and then I hit spots where there is mold release. Because uh, when you hit the mold release part, it's really slick. So let's see. All right. Set that off to dry and see what we got. Let's go ahead and get up in here and get in this, get all that powder off. All right, guys, uh, I'm counting on the microphone being close to me to override the sound of the fan and the, the rattle of the can and all that. Um, what we're using is uh, Krylon uh, gray primer. I like, uh, it's a flat primer. Um, I like it because it uh, it covers everything in a neutral color that's pretty much the same color as the sprue. Um, after washing this and making sure that all the um, making sure that all of the uh, mold release was off, I. Uh, basically got everything uh prepped i had to do a little bit of moving around on my table um and so now what i'm trying to do is just uh, get a good base coat on it um we're gonna do a little shading you know uh, with some black and then uh, we're gonna go over it with our colors which are gonna be shades of uh blue gray and um this will be the floor you know um and we'll see how that goes. Um, I've got the uh, the uh, vent now goes out my garage door and set out of the wall on the other side. Um, so we've got good ventilation going on. Uh, let me arrange the other parts on something we can prime them on and then, uh, and then we'll come back. All right guys, check this out. Sometimes um, you need an extra hand. Um, these are the crew, and um, these guys are spindly and hard to hold. Um, so what I'm trying to do is put the arms on, and um, I'm being uh, having a hard time with a couple things. First, uh, the arms are really thin, and it's hard to uh, hang on to them. Uh, second, uh, it takes two people or an extra set of hands to um, get
get everything stable and get pieces in the right place. Well, I'm by myself, so I don't have an extra person to help me out. So what I have to do is use my tools to my advantage. What I'm doing right now is I'm taking and I'm actually uh, sanding the flash off of the uh, parts that I'm going to mold or I'm going to put on there. And then I'm going to... Um, glue them on. Well, as I would, as it would happen, for some reason right now, probably because of the high humidity, my super glue is not really um, wanting to stick. So this is uh, something I call jamming. You're just going to jam it on there. Um, what you're going to do is, let me make sure we can keep in focus here. We're going to take and put a little drop of glue on the part that we want to stick. Then we're going to take, this is an eyedropper bottle full of zip kicker. And we're going to put a drop onto the model part. And then basically what we're going to do is put it on there. And then once they make contact, the chemical reaction should start to happen which will then secure the arm in place. Now you want to make sure that it's in a good location, which it is. Now let's say it's barely stuck on there, right? So what you do is you come back with some thin zappa gap and you put it right on the top of the crack here and then you give it one little one little drop mm -hmm. barely put a drop on there if you get any excess on you can come back with a q-tip wipe it up but it's going to dry remember we've got the zip kicker on there so it's going to dry pretty quick there you go so now we roll in with the other arm and we're going to do the same thing. Some people don't like to use zip kicker because they say it'll make your uh, joints bad after a while. The glue won't stick anymore. But I find for doing stuff like this, um, it's perfect. It's not you know there's no weight going to be distributed to these guys. They're just going to be uh, sitting there looking cool. And there you have it. Okay, guys, here you go. Here's the uh, inclu the crew compartment. Um, the shame about this crew compartment is that it's going to be, the majority of it is going to be covered up um, when it's closed. So I'll be honest with you, I didn't spend a whole bunch of time detailing the um, troops. I just got their basic figures painted with some highlights. Uh, what I did was I primed the floor and then painted the side walls with a blue and then uh, painted the guys with a different kind of blue uh, painted the control panels and then put them all in gave them a clear coat and then washed them with a, a griffin sepia type wash and uh, that way you know you're gonna be looking at it through the hatch and that's about what you're gonna see so I think that turned out okay um, for the effect that I was going for. You know, you see little crew dudes in there, they're busy at work, they're doing towel stuff, maybe shooting a lot of those uh, weaponry and things. Now, I'll put a little bit more time in on the um, the pilots because they're going to be a lot more visible because their crew compartment is wide open. Um, but these guys, you know, they get a paint job. You got your little squad leader there. After I did the uh, wash and everything, I came back did a, bur a dry brush on the highlights and uh and that's about it so there's the crew compartment